Open Side Flanker, the fetcher of the rugby team. Rugby union is a constant battle for territory and possession. For a team to score in rugby, they need to be winning both of those battles at a particular moment in time. And then for a team to win the game, they need to rack up more of these moments than their opponents do. The open side flanker position is born out of a team's need to compete for ball position. And in essence, the open side flanker position epitomizes what makes rugby union rugby union. The open side flanker is tasked with finding the ball at the breakdown and stripping the opposition of possession. This directly influences where the open side flanker packs down in the scrum, stands in the lineout, and positions themselves on the fence. It is at scrum time that the open side flanker position earns its name. The open side flanker packs down on the open side of the scrum. That is the side that is furthest away from the nearest touchline. And the opposite side is called the blind side. There are some truths in rugby that have been true for a long time and will remain true for a long time. And one of those truths are that it is easier to attack with more space than less space and it is harder to defend with more space than less space. What this means though is that teams that win the ball after a scrum usually take the ball to the open side. After a scrum there is an expectation that the open side flanker will be the first supporting player to arrive at the first breakdown. This is to either secure position by clearing away would-be poachers or in turn being a poacher themselves and trying to strip the tackle player off the ball. So by packing down on the open side of the scrum, the flanker is best placed to do so. During the scrum, the open side flanker binds onto the side of a lock and pushes into the back of a prop, lending their power to the scrum until it is time to make a speedy breakaway. A genuine open side flanker that plays as a fetcher is not very likely to be used as a regular jumper in the lineup. Sometimes they do get used as a surprise tactic, but generally speaking, you want your seven to be towards the back of the lineup. This is for the same reason they pack down on the open side of the scrum. This is where they are best placed to reach that first breakdown. Most teams are likely to have lineout formations that require the open side flanker to help out with lifting duties from time to time. Also, when required, they need to compete in the mall, which often forms after a lineout. A rugby team requires some positions to play tight and other positions to play loose. When a player is playing tight, it means they are playing closer to the ruck and getting more involved in the close quarter exchanges. When a player is playing loose, it means they are looking to get involved in more open, expansive attacking play. Your tight forwards do as the name suggests and they play tight and the back line plays loose. Your loose forwards on the other hand have to maintain a balance between playing tight and playing loose. This is what separates a great loose forward from good loose forwards. A great loose forward would recognise when the team needs reinforcement in the tight exchanges and they would adjust their play style accordingly. And they would balance this with their ability to make themselves available as ball carriers and supporting runners during more expansive attacking play. So on attack, a loose forward could find themselves running support lines for the back line as much as carrying the ball up into traffic with the forwards. This is because loose forwards are the generalists of a rugby team and they get involved in everything without the burden of responsibility that comes with specialising. This frees them up to play the game more organically than most other positions do. At ruck time, while their team has position, an open side flanker is expected to clear away would-be poachers just like any other player on the team is expected to do, especially forwards. But it's when the other team has the ball in the ruck that the number seven position really comes into its own. A number seven is expected to lead the way in poaching the ball of tackle players at the breakdown. An open side flanker is typically strong in their feet with a low center of gravity, which makes them hard to move off the ball once they've gotten into position over it. So a number seven is always looking for an opportunity to poach the ball off tackle players. They have to do so before a ruck forms because once a ruck forms, players are no longer allowed to use their hands. 
If the poaching player gets a hold on the ball before the ruck forms, they are allowed to continue playing it and the player on the ground has to let go. Loose forwards along with centres typically make the most tackles in the game. Sometimes locks can rack up higher numbers, but it is more common to see the highest tackling numbers to come out of the loose forward trio. An open side flanker has to take this a step further and defend as required whilst trying to get themselves into position where they expect ball carriers to be tackled or go to ground so that they can get onto the ball quickly before the cavalry arrives. So a good open side flanker understands the ruck and the laws that govern it because they need to understand when is a good time to compete in the ruck or when to concede it and to stay in a defensive position. Of course, the art of poaching is a risky one. Uh, it could easily win your team penalties just as easily as what it could cost your team penalties. If the poacher gets it wrong, they'll play the ball too late after the ruck has formed and they will get penalized. Conversely, if they get it right, often what happens is the player on the ground does instinctively not let go and then that player gets penalized. So an open side flanker plays the game on the edge of the law and they have to have a good understanding of where that line is in order for them to be able to push it as far as they can without overstepping. That's all from me today guys. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep doing this and uh, I'll see you for the next video. Cheers, bye bye.